recording here. So now that we've got everybody, everybody welcome. Again, I'm Dennis Smith and I'm the host of The Blab and I've got my friends, fellow instructors and co-hosts with me here on The Blab and I'll have them introduce themselves briefly. I'll give a brief uh, recap of what happened over the weekend or just kind of some of the stuff that we went through. And then each of the instructors can just kind of talk about their experience and share their thoughts, especially like when it comes to Udemy pricing, just kind of what your thoughts were on that and some of the other things that we went through. So, um, Dragos, go ahead and introduce yourself first. Hey everyone, I'm Dragos. I'm also a Udemy instructor. I teach a variety of things on Udemy. Um, I was at Udemy Live. I don't know what else I should say. Um, yeah, looking forward to tell you guys about the experience because it was a pretty awesome conference. Great, thank you. Diego. Hey guys, my name is Diego Lavila, a Udemy instructor. I'm so happy to, to be here with you guys. Uh, now I know you personally, so that's great. Uh, I see here on the chat, uh, Teresa and Jack too. Um, well, I teach home business, marketing, and basically I try to teach anything I know, everything I know on, on Udemy. So that's me, and so happy to be here. Um, let's pass the microphone to Jeremy. <laughs> hey everyone, how's it going? Good, man. Y'all hear, hear me okay? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, I'll Jeremy, for joining us. Yeah, definitely have some technical issues, but I got them figured out. So my name's Jeremy Deegan. Uh, I do graphic design and I teach uh, GarageBand for Mac, which is like an audio music program. And uh, yeah, went to the Udemy Live event. It was wonderful. Uh, like Diego said, got to meet all y'all in person, which was really cool. So uh, a lot of fun getting to hang out with everyone and just seeing everyone in person, such a different experience. I enjoyed it a lot. Great. Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate that. and glad you got that worked out. I saw your message there on Facebook and I'm like, he's sitting there worried about like who's getting the, who we're sharing this to. And it's like, <laughs> just, just get in here. So, so yeah. So, so, Hey everybody. So I just wanted to uh, say, first of all, like if you want to connect with people who are here on the blab with us and other instructors that maybe you didn't get a chance to connect with at Udemy live you can go ahead and connect uh, above here. Also off to the side there, if you want to tweet this out and share this on Facebook so we let other instructors or others who are maybe curious about Udemy so that they can join us. And slash forward slash Q, a space, if you have questions for us or if you want to jump in at some point, we're going to talk a little bit first. And then if we want to, some people want to switch out and let some other people chat, we can do that too. Uh, so anyway, my journey started on Thursday. I rented a car and I drove down from Boise, uh, went all the way through and was in contact with Dragos. And what we did is I picked him up and we surprised Jack at the airport and picked him up. And we had to race into downtown San Francisco because we found out that the parking garage that I wanted to park at that was a lot less than the hotel parking was closing at midnight. So we had to drop uh, Dragos off at his place where he's staying. And we made it just in time, uh, parked the car and got to the hotel. And wow, we stayed up that first night late talking to Scott Duffy. And then the next morning, things started. Saturday was a full day. Uh, we started out with kind of a, a speech from uh, Gregory, who is he the, the marketing VP? I always forget. Yeah, like, content. Of content. I got, I got that wrong on a, on a video. So I okay. Know. <laughs> okay. Good. Thanks. I would too. And then we had other speakers like Claire, who's in charge of IT, and Dennis Yang, who is the CEO of Udemy. And then we went into these breakout sessions. There were, I think, like about three sessions per breakout that you would get to choose from. And then, wow, that went quick. And we were right into a really nice lunch and got to talk with a lot of different people and, and Jack and I sat together and we met Tracy who is actually from LA and now Jack gets to hang out with her and, and Phil and and Dave and some other people who live in the LA area. So she was um, really nice and really cool to get to know her. And then back into breakout sessions and then it seemed like we were right into a, a, a cocktail reception at the hotel before dinner. 
And we all sat down, we were assigned a different area or district in San Francisco. And I sat down at my table next to, um, gosh darn it, it's like, I know who I sat next to, uh, Joe yeah. Paris, Joe Paris to my left. And, and Jack was at the table behind me and Dennis Yang approached me and said, hey, can I sit at the table with you guys? And I'm like, heck yeah. So I got to sit and have dinner with the CEO of Udemy. So that was a cool experience. And then we got um, we were entertained by Oz the Mentalist, who uh, I don't know if he actually won America's Got Talent, but man, that was so amazing, the stuff that he was doing. I told my parents about it, and I'm still like thinking like, okay, how how did he do that? And and then we went over to um, a bar with some of the Udemy staff and got to have like some really uh, really cool conversations and stuff like that with um, the Udemy, it's not all of the Udemy team, but then also other instructors. And again, up late, uh, Sunday started off with uh, a breakfast. And what's kind of funny is like um, the first day, there was just like a breakfast with, it was a good breakfast with fruits, <laughs> fr fr fruits and muffin, but you know, we're thinking like eggs and bacon. I actually was joking with Dennis Yang. I was saying, oh, my friend Jack here was a little bit disappointed because there was no bacon. Well, the next day we had bacon and eggs and hash browns and all of that. So that was... Thank you, Dennis. That was good. <laughs> it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was cool. And, and then... Um, and, and then we had Seth Godin speak, and that was a pretty amazing uh, speech that he gave. But I'll let the guys kind of like give their um, impression of that. And then uh, that was a, a lunch, and then we went out like uh, for coffee. But we also it was uh, Pride Weekend in San Francisco, so we caught part of the parade, and that's a huge event in that city. So that was cool to experience that, and then met Jewel and. Gosh darn it, like um, uh, Arette, I think. Arit. Uh, Arit, yeah. So, uh, who was so cool because she lives in Vancouver, BC, but her parents, like her, I, I can't remember which one. I think it is her dad is Moroccan and her mom is Egyptian, and she was born in South Africa. And so there were so many people from so many different countries, including, you know, a lot of us here from the U.S. And I told Dennis Shang, I said, the thing that I like the most about Udemy as a company is the diversity. So with with that, my Romanian friend Dragos is going to go ahead and maybe just kind of like, like just talk about your takeaway and then we'll go to Diego and Jeremy and others can jump in here. Sure. I mean... I guess it's true for, for me and for everyone else that the highlight of this weekend was uh, definitely Oz the Mentalist, um, you know, <laughs> conference aside. <laughs> no, but it was really cool. I mean, when I, saw, when I first saw Udemy Live um, being announced, I knew straight away I would, would be coming. And I flew all the way from Romania. It was a 27-hour journey. So, um, but I knew, I knew it would be worth it, not necessarily for the content, uh, although the content was great and all the presentations were very informative, um, especially the ones regarding the pricing, because we could kind of get um, a sense of what Udemy's plans are and um, what, what they're planning for the future and kind of get some reassurance on that. Um, but mostly because we met all the other instructors in person, and I'm sure that's the biggest takeaway from each mm -hmm. and every one uh, here. Uh, because you can do partnerships, you you found you met the people live that you've spoken to for the past few years um, online, and I just think the energy was crazy. Um, it's almost like one of those events, you know, when you when you go somewhere and you want to meet all these people, and you can never really have meaningful conversations with everyone. You can kind of you have to pick and choose and uh, divide yourself between many people, but you know, nothing meaningful co comes out of it most of the times, but it's good to, to get to know everyone. So I think those were the highlights for me. And then definitely, I think, um, Udemy's new direction with the pricing change and how they're focusing on quality and, uh, student engagement and better quality for the students coupled with Seth Godin's speech. I think it really made us realize, at least for, for me, it made me realize that sometimes I might be too focused on the short-term gain, so creating new courses. Even though you believe that those courses are going to help people, Seth kind of made it clear that you should strive for, for way more than that, create a tribe and only put your 
best quality stuff out there. So I think that was uh, really helpful, fascinating, and uh, inspiring. Diego? Well, uh, I was expecting something totally different from, from Udemy Live, uh, honestly. I chat with a few instructors before before traveling, and they asked me, so what are you expecting? What, what's your goal with Udemy Live? And honestly, I was not expecting much from Udemy. Uh, I am two years on teaching on Udemy, and I mean, we learn a lot in the two years. We are self-learners, and we chat with other instructors all the time. So I thought, okay, maybe we already know what's, how to do things. I mean, so I was going mainly for the networking, to connect with you guys, with the instructors, and to meet the Udemy team. And I found something outstanding there. I mean, it needs, starting with, with the instructors, the, the community there, I mean, I was expecting to have great conversations and have a great time with the instructors, but I end up creating friends there and, and, and having like amazing conversations uh, it's not like a, just a, a business connection, you know. It's, it's something more than that. And also, the Udemy team was outstanding. I mean, they they treat each of each one of us as we are like total VIP, you know, as the most important person in in the room, you know. And that and that's from any of the of the of the Udemy team that I met. So it was great, great experience. I I learn, I end up learning a lot in the workshops, um, a lot about marketing. About I have some notes here, um, how to improve my courses. So for me, it was an excellent experience. I I if you tell me, okay, let's do a, another Udemy Live in one month, I'm in. You know, that's very <laughs> proud. <laughs> so I really uh, like it, guys. <laughs> Yeah, I like, I was having withdrawals last night because, you know, it's like I shared that uh, hotel room with Jack and I was like, there's nobody for me to talk to before I go to sleep. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, that's awesome. I, 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 I agree with you, like, totally. So, Jeremy, how about yourself? Um, one of the most interesting things that uh, I really liked about attending the event was seeing everybody's lower body because we only get to see this piece up. <laughs> it was really interesting to see what people actually look like. Oh, my gosh. No, I mean, like, you know, Dennis, Dennis Diego, y'all were, like, way taller than I ever imagined you to be. It was crazy. I'm looking up to you. Like, How about wow. Joe? Oh. <laughs> but, no, it was – Joe Paris. Yeah, Joe, holy <laughs> smokes, man. Um, no, it, it, was a, <clears throat> it was a lot of fun. Um <laughs> You know, like like Diego said, the 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 staff was just amazing. Um, even even the top people, you know, De uh, Dennis and Aaron and uh, Gregory, they they all just were so approachable. You know, they didn't mm -hmm. they didn't have this. You know, Dennis was out during the uh, the um, right before the gala, having drinks and joking around, cutting up with people, and you could talk to him. It wasn't this air of like you know, we created this and, you know, you work for us and, and some type of corporate regime, you know, so it, it mm -hmm. felt more like a community. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I was really impressed to, to hear about how far the company has come and what their plans for the future are. Um, the fireside chat I thought was really great because it really gave you a sense of like, you know, the, the, these people have put their life's work into creating this and they're not just going to let it, you know, fall by the wayside. Like this is serious business to them. If you hear where this, where the company started, where it came from, the struggles they had to go to get it to happen, you really start to understand that, you know, um, the things that they are doing, the policies they're implementing, they're in it for the long time. As y'all said, you know, they're, they're in it to make this thing work and they're not, they're not just, you know, looking at data and just randomly choosing choosing uh, uh, choices and options, you know, just for the heck of it, they're studying this stuff. And uh, that was another big point was Udemy is very data driven. Every single one of their breakouts, the general sessions were numbers, numbers, percentages, graphs. This is where it's happening. This is where it's going. They're looking at this stuff all the time and they have a much higher, broader view than we do. So, you know, as a as Drago said, it's very easy to, to stand here 
as an instructor and get wrapped up in your own course and your own little vision of what you want to happen. But you, you know, it's, you got to understand that Udemy is definitely at that 10,000 foot level, seeing everything and trying to make the best decisions for both them and us as instructors. So I thought it was great to get that information while we were there too. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's like, you know, I had conversations with people that, um, uh, you know, like Lindsay and I see Eliza might be here still with us. And, and that's just so cool. Like you said, it's a community. And again, like going back to like my, my dinner guests, like right next to me, the, the CEO of the company and, and even like Rob Percival, who's like the top, probably the top instructor on Udemy getting to talk to him. And it's like, wow, this is just so cool because you know, it's just like, just like an everyday normal person, you know, they just happen to be at a different level of success. Then, I mean, we're all at different levels of our uh, journey and all of that. So, um, what, you know, what I wanted to talk about uh, is like start talking about some of the sessions that we attended. And I wanted to start first with my favorite session, I think that will be, uh, most memorable for me is one called How to Build and Delight an Engaged Audience. And that was with Mimi Goodwin. And she's a Udemy instructor, but she also had an amazing story to tell. And she was very open about that. She is a product of um, sexual abuse and physical abuse in her marriage. And she left that and she created this successful blog around the world of fashion and built that into, built a huge audience and built that into a uh, upper six figures, I think that she was saying. And I had added her on social media and I had gone up to her and told her that I really enjoyed her, her presentation and the fact that she was so open with everyone. But I added her on LinkedIn linkedin and i sent her a message and she was so nice she had returned the message within a day and said stay in touch so that was the session i think that stood out to me the most dragos what about you uh, i actually missed that one because i think i went to the instructor panel mm -hmm. uh, with that session the one that i really enjoyed was the social media one not the first half but the second half um, because the first part I think was quite generic, but the second part with, I cannot remember his name. Erin, um, right? The YouTube guy? Yeah, the YouTube guy. It exactly. Erin. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I, I, I enjoyed that second half, but, um, he was really, he was really good. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, okay. Yeah. He had a, he had an early start with, with YouTube about 2006. I think he said he wasn't one of the first people on, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, that definitely contributes to his success, but all the things that he said, um, in, in those 20, 30 minutes actually gave you practical things to chase. So it instantly got me thinking, okay, I need to implement a system where I can record myself, uh, really easily so that I can create videos over and over again. And there's always that, that twist, you know, whenever you put your personal twist, whenever you share personal stories. Um, whenever you're, you're friendly and approachable with people, not necessarily something staged, that's when you engage most with your audience. And that was a big lesson for me because most of my videos that I film, I film them in a studio and, you know, I need to make sure there's space in the studio. I need to set up the green screen, lighting, audio, all that stuff. I'm such a perfectionist, but I think I get lost in, in these details instead of just getting a microphone from my iPhone, just walking down the street and filming videos on certain topics for my audience. You know, they're still going to be HD. They're not going to be perfectly done. But uh, that was the biggest takeaway for me, uh, how he engages his community on, on YouTube. So that session was really helpful because I really want to make um, YouTube one of my, my focal points for the future. Yeah, yeah. And he, I think he was a vocal. He's a vocal coach is what he does so musicians who are having problems like maybe after a cold or the, their voice has been stressed or whatever and so people from around the world like look to him they discover him like through his youtube channel and they pay him quite well for that kind of stuff so yeah i agree that was really interesting and i think that um 
you know, like you're right, like making YouTube a focal point for that kind of stuff. Uh, and I posted uh, Eric's name in there. I'm uh, uh -huh. Arsenault, I think is like how you would pronounce that. That's I believe French. And so if you want to look up Eric and then Shauna Cook uh, started things off. And then the speaker that I was talking about was Mimi Goodwin. And as Diego talks about his, um, I'll go ahead and post that in there. Or you can go to udemylive.com and all of the speakers and the breakout sessions are, are there too. So if you want to look at that with us. So Diego, what about yourself? What, what stood out as far as the, the different uh, sessions? Well, for me, the favorite was us the mentalist. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> now, honestly, uh, I like there are three sessions that I really like. Uh, the first one is the I don't remember. I think it's Christina. Her name is uh, from Udemy team on the main room. We had that before the pricing update. Uh, after the pricing update, I think. And it was about students first creating and launching exceptional courses. So they basically, uh, one lady from the marketing department uh, gave explanation about the right way to do the, the, to create courses and to create like the funnel for the students to engage the students. And they talk about creating quick wins. So basically uh, in the first lectures, you create something for the student that that they can have a, a, a quick win, so they can be engaged and continue watching the course. Because I don't remember the number, but I think I don't know the 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 the, the major number of students drop the course within the first lectures. So by doing that, you have like an engaging community. Um, also, I really like the the who is the, the Udemy student, where they got the whole Udemy audience and they divide in seven personas. So uh, that's I think that's great, and I really like that for me personally because I can I know who my persona is and I can create a course specifically for this kind of audience. You know, totally focused, totally target, um, without worrying about any other kind of audience. You know, so. Um, yeah, that's that's that that's my, my three favorites. Oh, I cannot. You are on mute, Dennis. I think. Oh. Oh, now you are back. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that little X means. <laughs> oh. Oh, Jeremy, go ahead and and uh, let us know like what your favorite session was. Yeah, and uh, you know. Uh, Diego and I were in a lot of the same ones, and I, I feel kind of the same way. I would like to talk about, you know, Seth Godin's keynote if we're going to do that later. And uh, I would also like to talk later about the um, putting your students first, because that was three instructors mm -hmm. uh, that Diego was talking about. Uh, Catherine uh, Gao, David Quintin Quintanilla, and Matthew O'Dell. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was very powerful yeah. because it, it had a lot of actionable information in it, like – things that we could actually take away and go do. Some of these breakouts were very uh, data-driven, which I like. Those are the ones I attended because I like numbers and what have you. But that one I really enjoyed because it was very, very actionable. Like, do this and you will be better at creating your courses. Um, the one that I really liked, though, was also the um, Who is Your Udemy Student? And uh, as Diego said, basically what they did was they gave us a breakdown of different types of avatars. So what your who your audience mainly is and they had done a lot of research and found out that there's about seven different types of people some of them are millennial students some of them are lifelong learners where they don't they just want to absorb all the education they can some of them are older people who don't have a whole lot to do but they just sit around and take a course here and there maybe they, they try to make their lifestyle better some of them are uh, doing a course because uh, it's it, they have to do it for their business. So uh, it's something that they have to do. Maybe they don't even want to do it. So I thought that was really cool. And going through that that section, I really made it, 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 it was apparent to me that I need to focus on who I'm targeting when I do these courses. Because it's very easy for us to say, okay, uh, I know Facebook advertising, so I'm just going to put a Facebook advertising course up. And it's so general that you you catch everybody. And that can have a number of different effects. 
Um, one, you're not building a tribe. You're not focusing on any one type of audience that you want to follow you. And two, it neg negatively affects reviews because it's so general that you're catching all kinds of different people. And some people are going to like it and some people aren't going to like it. And this kind of goes back to what Seth Godin was talking about in his keynote is building your tribe and your audience and saying, this isn't for you. This is not the course for you. It, it, this is what it says. This is who it's for. If this isn't you, go away because I'm not trying to talk to you. <laughs> You know, uh, th this course is for this type of person. This is what we do. This is the type of person I am. This is the type of person I want to attract. So I think that going forward, um, that really struck a bell with me, uh, especially when I created my first courses. I didn't say they were beginner. I just made it toward the software. It was a catch all course. And I get some people who say this is perfect. I needed this information. And then I get other people who say this is way too basic for me. So going forward, I need to be very specific. Is this for a beginner? Is this for an advanced person? Is this for someone who needs this for their job? Or is this someone who's just taking this course because uh, they, they're, they're bored and they have nothing better to do? And going back to that put your student first with Catherine Gao, uh, one thing that she said numbers wise was 30% of students who leave reviews say the course did not meet their expectations. So they were expecting something and 30% of those people leave because it didn't meet their expectations. So I feel like between putting your students first in these numbers with that uh, particular general session is saying you need to be very specific about what you're teaching and who it's for and who you're targeting. So that that's one that I, I really liked and got a lot of takeaways from. Great. Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate you sharing that information because I know like with myself, a lot of times like, I'll be in these sessions or whatever and a lot of the stuff that I know and I like to like socialize and stuff like that. So even though I it might look like I'm not paying attention, I am, but it's, there are things that I miss sometimes. So I appreciate you chiming in with that. So let's see. So we've talked about, um, the, the, our, our favorite sessions, there were a, a lot of different sessions and I believe that Udemy recorded most of those and that they're going to do some editing on that and then start sharing some things out with the community in general through the Udemy studio. But it's kind of nice to get this like uh, viewpoint from those who attended and I see that Dave is back and I know that Dave and Phil are going to host a blab tomorrow and kind of um, do the same thing. I mean, we all have our different style and all of that. I wanted to get, um, you know, like do a, a, a recap show and st just because, um, you know, we all attended to talk about like what our experiences are, but Dave and Phil and others will, will do the same. I believe Dave, if you want to like, let people know like what time that uh, is tomorrow, you can certainly do that there in, in the live chat. So, um, <sighs> I guess for myself, like, you know, like we were talking about, you know, I was thinking about like what, like maybe something talk about like something else that, that stood out or something else that you enjoyed. For me, I think that the, uh, it was connecting with people on a different level than like what we're doing right now. So for the longest time, you know, I've been doing these blabs and hangouts with people like Alan Hill and Matt and Rob Coven. Some of those people weren't able to attend this time. I hope that they're able to attend next time because I still want to meet them in person. But just the, the bonding and stuff like that, being able to hang out, being able to see somebody like Drago's Davila, um, uh, <laughs> Drago's Drago's <Davila. laughs> <laughs> Diego and Jeremy <laughs> and Dave and Phil and Chad and Jack and Teresa and Kathy from uh, um, from the UK and Rob who I met and Joe Paris who's much taller than the rest of us in person but now uh, I can say that I've met all of you in person. So I think that it's a different, um, 
a different environment or a different kind of friendship now than it was before because it was just, you know, here we are. And and Dragos is actually still in the U.S. So, I mean, we're, we're actually all right here in, in the United States until he still takes off. Lagged. What's that? Still jet lagged. Yeah, really? <laughs> You should have seen how tired he was. He went to the airport with me to pick up Jack, and, <laughs> and I felt so sorry for him. I mean, I had been driving, and I was starting to get tired, but I had to keep an eye out for Jack when he got off the plane. And he um, actually, I thought he was just resting, but I guess he fell asleep for a little while. People were kind of walking by, like, what's that guy doing? But but that was a, a fun experience going to the airport and and driving back, I was going like 70 miles an hour. And I looked down because in the city, they actually had the speed limit painted on the road surface. And I was like 50. I was like, oh my gosh. But you know, I don't, I think like only once that entire trip that I see uh, California Highway Patrol. And I was thinking if I got pulled over that I would start joking about my favorite show when I was young, which was chi <laughs> Chips. <laughs> <laughs> So, so hey, so um, let's go back and we'll we'll go back to Jeremy. So, Jeremy, what about like another moment that that stood out for you? Let's talk about Seth Godin. Yeah, we can talk about Seth Godin. Seth Godin was awesome. Okay. I know he's he's a kind of person where you you either love him or you hate him. I know some people uh, I talked to weren't that impressed, but I, I I thought it was awesome. I thought he got me really really motivated about um, just building that tribe and understanding who, who you're going after. Um, I'm trying to think of so, some of the things he, he was talking about. It's, um, I didn't take notes. I recorded the video and I haven't watched it yet, but um, he's just, you know, he just, he just really, really felt like he had a wealth of information. Uh, he talked about reviews. Um, and I know a lot of people kind of brought that up before about, Oh, you shouldn't read your reviews. You should read your views. Your reviews are going to help make things better in the course, which I agree with. Like, if you're going mm -hmm. through your reviews, you can definitely find some things that are are going to stand out. Like, um, hey, hey, your microphone was clipping the whole time. Oh, yeah, that's definitely some information that I can take and and, and go back and fix. Or, you know, hey, this part was kind of slow, so I got bored. Well, yeah, you can take that information. But really, his point was that people get so engulfed in the review system that they spend their whole life's work worrying and stressing out and freaking out about reviews. And I think kind of the points that he was trying to get about through that is that keep producing Every, you know, you're going to have good work. You're going to have bad work. You're going to have people who like you. You're going to have people who don't like you. So just keep producing content. You know, what did he say? He's written like, 6,000 days on his blog in a row and even if everyone quit reading it he would still be writing because that's his passion that's what he wants to do so keep producing that content keep going keep going keep going and then yeah. one key takeaway that he made that I thought was really cool was find someone who's a friend or someone who's trustworthy and let them take the course and then drill them about what's wrong you know like I, I, I need to be reaching out to you guys instead of worrying about every single review comes in, reaching out to you guys and saying, you know, Dennis, can you please just watch these couple lectures and tell me, am I going too fast, too slow? Is this boring? You know, like, uh, you know, Drago says, my audio sound good or, or is my video OK? You know, reaching out to the people who I, I trust and who are friends that are going to give me that honest feedback than worrying about someone who's across the seas, who doesn't know me, who doesn't care if I win or fail, and who isn't going to provide that good feedback. Now, Udemy is a little different. I mean, it's not different because all all rating systems adjust your rankings. But right now, Udemy is going through some changes where these reviews are really changing how our courses are being seen. And I think that's another concern of people is, well, if I get a 0.5 star review, I'm not going to be on the second page. But going back to what Seth Godin was saying, if you have your tribe, it doesn't matter what page you're on because you should be reaching out to your tribe and saying, this is the material I have. Go sign up for it and not worrying about where you're landing on Udemy's search algorithm. Because I think his point was that you shouldn't be depending on Udemy to be your only source of traffic. You should be finding your own source of traffic on the Internet and bringing people to your course 
not what most people sign up for Udemy for, which is, you know, just throw up a course, hope it hits page one and you become a millionaire overnight. You know, that's, we all know that's not how it works. So I, I, I really liked it. I thought it was a cool, cool keynote. I thought it was a great guy. I read his book on the plane home. Uh, really cool book. It's uh, very interesting. It's visual. It's uh, very digestible. It's not really long and drawn out. And he has some great points in this book too. So I really liked it. Did you win the book, Jeremy? Yes. Yeah, I was one of the yeah. one of the names who won. So oh. I got got yeah. my side copy. I think that's. I'm not a person who cares about uh, celebrities. Uh, I don't know if y'all know, but I worked in the music industry for a long time. I've met a lot of celebrities and I've never been one to like freak out about people and be like, oh, will you sign this for me? Can I get your autograph, your handshake? You know, let's take a picture. Like, that's just not me. I think this might be the first signed book that I've ever gotten from anyone in my life. <laughs> so, well, it, it helps. I, I, did, I, did, I I did show my wife. I was like, look, Seth Godin signed my book. <laughs> it, it helps later on if you need some money and you need to put it on eBay. That It's got that signature. Yeah, so exactly. Exactly. I, I, I've, you know, what's funny is like I told Jack that I've gone and signed copies of my book too. And they're probably not as worth as much. But, um, you know, like some of the things that I thought like, okay, so I can understand like as far as the reviews, I would say, toss the ones and the fives out and look at the ones in the middle. I think that that would be able, if you're going to look at reviews, that that would give you a better picture. I'm not necessarily sure about asking uh, f friends for certain advice on what I do because um, now with you guys, it would be a little bit different since we're in the same industry, but I want honest feedback. I don't want somebody to like, just like give me feedback and not tell me the truth. If I really suck or something like that is not right, I want to know about that. But, um, you know, there are people who, some people who are brutally honest, and then there are people who aren't going to really, uh, you know, like um, American Idol, the people who go on American Idol thinking that they're, you know, God's gift to the music industry and they suck because their friends keep telling them, oh, you're really good, you're really good. And then they get to a show like American Idol and then somebody gives them, honest feedback and and they're hurt by that so i want to know um where i need improvement the other thing um so so like see like somebody like him they can say that because he's got money coming in he's made it um so he doesn't have to really worry about those reviews because he's making money regardless because he's got this tribe now People are following him, and so they're just going to buy whatever that individual or, or or read whatever that individual puts out. So, um, but but I thought the information was great in general. I mean, the one thing that I think that struck me is like the fact that we're teachers, we're educators, and there's not like uh, around the world there's not like a ton of people who do that, who are doing like what we do and changing lives and making an impact. And we're in basically at the ground level because there's still so much more uh, potential because, you know, somebody was talking to me the other day, like as far as you to me, I know that instructors out there are frustrated because of the downturn, but this is just the, sh the short term. In the long term, if you look out at the bigger picture, there's so much potential for you to me. And if they were to be bought by somebody like Facebook or Apple or something like that, just think about the potential for um, that amount of students or many more students that, um, you know, that we would have. So, Diego, you want to go ahead and talk about yeah. um, what stood out? And then we'll go to Dragos. Dragos, did you already talk? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> so, and also we need we need to remember that uh, that Seth Godin. I mean, he has like millions of reviews. I mean, not millions, but hundreds of reviews. And there is a point when your business is running, as you said, Dennis, and you already have your tribe, and you said, "Man, I don't, I won't read any reviews anymore. You know, it doesn't add me anymore. I mean, I just need to produce my content and and be happy. You know. So, mm -hmm. what what I really like about about the talk is that. As, as Jeremy was saying, when you find your tribe, you produce your, your, your courses, your material for this specific audience. And 
I think you work with more satisfaction because you know your tribe, you know that they like you because this kind of of uh, persona, let's say, talking about the Udemy example, uh, they like what you do. So all you need to do is just produce more content and don't worry about the haters and about the reviews or whatever. You just worry about what is important, which is creating high quality courses. You know, that's the most important thing, you know? Um, and also, Another thing that I I took out from the from the for his his talk is about the crisis. I mean, we are in a crisis not right now in Udemy, you know, because the price change and the revenue is dropping from for every for almost everybody. And I think now is the time to keep creating courses and and keep producing high quality high quality stuff, you know, to I mean, there, there, there are two kinds of people right now in the crisis. The people that jump out of the boat, say, okay, this is not working anymore and I'm going out. And the people that said, no, I am investing my time here. I invest already two, three years or whatever the time you are. And I will continue doing that, you know, have a little bit of faith. And it's not only faith right now, because what we saw in Udemy Live, all the numbers, they really care about the numbers, about the statistics. They are an amazing team, you know, they are amazing people that really care about what they are doing, you know. That's what we saw on, on this weekend. So that that's it. Um, th that's about the, the talk of Seth Godin. What do you think, Dragos? Well, firstly, I really love that he was really open. Uh, as Teresa said uh, on the chat as well, he talked to a lot of people. I saw him at the breakfast sitting at the table with people uh, when he was signing his books. He was very friendly. Uh, one thing that I really loved, and I, I, he actually struck me with this. I went to, to speak to him when he was signing the books, and he's like, hey, Dragos, what's up? And I, I swear I didn't even see his eyes go down to my name badge to see my name. It was incredible. Like he was so discreet, and I don't know if you guys realized, but when he was answering questions, yeah. uh, if there were people in the first two or three rows, he would see the name instantly, yeah. like not even hesitating. It was so. I don't know how, they, you know how he does that, man. Yeah. Well, it's just it's just attention to the name. Like, it's the yeah. first thing that he, he knows. He knows how much um, how much it means for someone to to get the name mentioned, and especially for me. It's uh, what I was shocked is that most people have problems pronouncing my name. Yeah. Uh, or they might, you know, at least do something like that and, and trying to read it off. He was just like instant and perfect pronunciation for, I mean, what was written on my on my name tag. Um, so I was shocked. That, that really reinforced this this thing that you really need to um, to focus on a person's name. It's the sweetest sound that, that they can hear. Um, he was very open. Can we first acknowledge how good of a public speaker he is? Because I, I, I'm in a Toastmasters group back home in English, and... Ever since I joined, I'm kind of wired to whenever someone speaks in public, I analyze all these little <laughs> details. And this guy's flawless. Yeah. Seriously. No ums, no uhs, no pauses. Everything flows naturally. A great storyteller. Everything he says has a story. Um, it's, it's, it's cool how he just goes story within story within story within story. It just seems like that's seamless for him. He starts with a story and ends with it. And there's a lot of them in between. Yeah. So I was really fascinated by that. It was it was so inspirational. I can't really add much more to what you guys said because you touched on all the points. One thing that I thought was really interesting, and this relates back to what Catherine was saying on making expectations clear, he said something similar in the, in the sense that he said it's sometimes don't, you know, we kind of think that you need to appeal to as many people as possible because your course is going to sell more. Whereas the counterintuitive truth is that if you push people away and you tell them straight away, you know, this course is not for you. If you're doing this, this is not for you. Stop watching it right now, blah, 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 blah. What will happen is people will, people that, that don't fit that criteria will not take your course. And everyone else kind of wants to prove themselves to you subconsciously. And they actually take your course. It's actually more engaging when you p push people away. You know, we all know if someone welcomes you like this, you're, yeah, you're going to join them. But if someone pushes you away, you're like, hold on, why is that person telling me, telling me not to join them? You know, it's, it's a bit like, oh, I'm it's not like good enough or, or what, you know? And yeah. that actually attracts your fans in, in, in the long run because the people that fit your mold are going to yeah. actually um, 
join your courses. So for me, one of the things that I that I do in my courses and that I will emphasize even more in the future is I adopt pretty much uh, a lot of Tony Robbins' style when he says, you know, do this right now. Uh, it's time to take action. Do not move to the next video um, unless you do this right now. I'm going to do more of that and I'm going to take it to the next level. I did walk on coals and it was pretty awesome. <laughs> um, no. I didn't feel a thing. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I recommend UPW for for anyone. It really changes Four, your life. Four, Forty-six um, people disagree with you. <laughs> yeah, whoa! Well, you know, bunch of people out of hundreds of thousands that did that. I don't know. Um, That's true. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 just making making it clear, even in the promo video and even in the introductory lectures, that um, you know this is not for you if you. Um, don't want to take action if you don't fit these requirements and so on. That was a big takeaway for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dish, can I add one more thing real quick? Sure. I, I remember something that I wanted to talk about and it, it came to me when y'all were talking. Uh, first of all, um, I, I agree with Dragos totally. Like, uh, when, when you put up that barrier that like, Hey, this isn't for you. It, it actually creates a little bit of intrigue. Like you said, like, wow, you know why if, if I'm, if I go up to uh, Jack Wilson and, and he's got his gym or, you know, he's, he's training someone and I come up and he goes, dude, this isn't for you. Like, you're not, you're not going to survive. Get out of here. The people who turn, turn around and walk away, you know, whatever, that's not for them. And the people who stick with it, I feel like are going to stick with it even more because mm -hmm. you've challenged them. Yeah. Like you're, you're going to fail. Oh, you tell that to me. I'm going to be like, oh yeah, let me prove to you yeah. that I'm not going to fail. And those people are really going to invest into what you have to say. Um, but what I wanted to talk about also was the purple cow because I thought that was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one of his other points was that one thing that we need to be trying to do is not trying to get to – his term was enroll, not, not trying to get everyone to enroll from yourself, but getting other people to enroll other people for you. So how can you create something in your course or in your brand that gets people so excited that they want to tell other people about it? And uh, I thought that was a really cool idea. Like, what can I do in my own life or my own courses where I'm not having to reach thousands of people? I just need to reach 100 people, but get those 100 people so excited that they'll go out and reach another 100 people for me and tell them about me. And mm -hmm. uh, the little purple cow uh, example, uh, the, the milk jug on the desk, you know, stuff like that is so out of the ordinary that I think that that's really cool. Um, and I forget what I signed up for. I signed up for something last year and, uh, it was like a newsletter or something silly on the internet. And they actually like mailed me like a postcard and like handwritten, like written out to me. And like, that was really responsive to me, you know, cause I'm like, wow, someone took the time to handwrite this out and personally send it to me. And those kinds of things makes me want to like go out and talk about that business or brand to other people. Um, so I thought that was another <laughs> great point that he had. That's kind of interesting that you mentioned handwritten because um, like with technology these days, there's so many ways that things can be sent that look handwritten that aren't, but I'm sure it was. It was just, just like um, it, it, even that, like even if it's not handwritten and it looks like that, just to take the time to do that, I think means a lot. I I forgot like who it was. Somebody sent me something like that, and I was like, "Oh, it was the. It, it's not Survey Monkey, but it's I, I forget what the. It's another survey site that I was using when I wrote the book, and they sent me a handwritten note and a yo-yo with their logo on it too. And I thought, <laughs> nice. "Wow, that that's pretty cool." So hey, so we're getting close to the top of the hour. So what I would like to do is spend like maybe the last ten minutes talking about pricing and also um if somebody wants to like maybe drop off and allow somebody else um we've got dave and jack and maybe i think Teresa still with uh to let them pop in for i can jump out yeah i can i'll yeah we, well, why, why don't we just all open it up and let yeah. anyone who wants to jump it, in talk it, if it, it, let's let's talk about pricing real quick and then like if somebody wants to jump in we can certainly do that so my my thoughts on pricing is pretty much that this is what I got out of it is that what they intended to get out of it they're they're seeing those results 
except for one thing. So I doubt that we're going to see like any change and we're definitely not going to go back to the old way that Udemy was doing things. The only thing that I saw was that the conversion is not where they would like it. And so that that's what they're mm -hmm. focusing on. But things like average course price and uh, Scott Duffy has a great video that he put out yesterday. So if you look for that, he's got some good information on on the charts and stuff like that. I took a picture of it, but I don't have it anywhere with me. So let's start um, on this one. Let's go with um, Diego and see what his thoughts are. And then we'll go to Dragos and then Jeremy. Well, uh, they show us all the numbers. So I have uh, seen that's not th these, these numbers. I believe that we're in the right way. I mean, I cannot I am not 100% sure about that, but I need to I need to invest in something, you know. So I, mm -hmm. I I invest in my my belief and all all my time in in the in believing that yes, we are in the right way because I saw all the numbers. The only thing is the conversions that are not very great right now, and they are working on it. They are testing uh, other price range up to a hundred dollars for I think certification courses or something like that. Um, and another thing that I noticed, guys, during the during the whole conference is I noticed that Udemy have only one big goal right now, which is to reach 100 million students. That's the first that I, I noticed that when Dennis Yan was was speaking in several of the opportunities, and also on the first uh, the first the opening talk, which was 100 million students and beyond where they show data, they show uh, projections. Uh, I really believe that they, they, are, they are looking for that 100 million student goal. And that's mm -hmm. 10 times more than we have right now, you know? So uh, I, I can worry about the price. I have no, I, I mean, nothing, my, my whole worry won't change the situation about the price, you know? So all I can do as taking responsibility of, of my business is keep creating courses. You know, if if Udemy uh, comes to 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 fail in the future for some reason, uh, I still have all my material that I can host in other places. So I still have my whole business running. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my opinion on pricing. I, I really don't know. Uh, I cannot be one hundred percent sure that it will work, but I choose to believe that that yes, we are on the right path. Great. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I was look, looking at some stuff here uh, with Dave Espino, and just so I don't have to type it. Yeah, Dave, go ahead and post that link tomorrow. So, so that well, you, I want to like, what is that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm like looking over there. I'm like losing it right now. I'm still trying to catch up on sleep. All right, Dragos. <laughs> Um, I mean, I came out with a really good sentiment after the conference because conversions are, are lower and I think that makes complete sense because there's no psychological trigger anymore, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's no more 90% off, which was very fake to begin with. And people that are new to Udemy are not tricked anymore into thinking that a $300 course is ten dollars just for the next two days and buying like crazy uh they can actually buy the courses at any point in time now you can argue that that's not good marketing but um also if they if they say um you know udemy students buy the courses that they want rather than feeling pressure to buy the courses that they want and that results in higher engagement then that's really good what i think is that we can also look and this kind of ties into what we were talking earlier about seth godin um, and Joe Paris actually mentioned this to me first. Maybe look into raising your prices. I just did that. Um, I can't really say I've seen results that are, you know, that, that put me in one direction or the other. But basically, if you put your course at, let's say, 40 bucks, if you have a really good course and it goes, goes to 40% off, it will be, what, $24, I think, which is quite a big difference than it being $12 and $20. You know, if, if your course is, uh, reduced um to twelve dollars and it costs twenty dollars usually people can just say i'll buy it later but if it's 24 versus 40 then it's a bigger deal 
Uh, and plus, we've seen the average sale price go up. So it's somewhere around 21 bucks, I think it was. I'm not exactly sure. But I mean, what I realized is that my, my course is at full price worth 20 bucks. And that just doesn't make any sense. Um, people are, you know, if people are willing to buy at 20, 21, that means like about $25 as well. Um, then why not put my courses up higher in price and just focus on that exclusivity and on beefing up uh, the course and uh, and making it higher quality so that people are, are more enticed to buy. So I think, yeah, definitely revenue is probably not going to go up in the future unless their traffic goes sky high. I think it's a definite lesson and it's a truth for all of us that we don't own the platform and you know, sometimes it just is what it is. Udemy's objectives might be different to ours. Um, and that's the risk that, that we all have while being on this platform. Uh, it's great that we get a ton of traffic for them and they do all the advertising for us. It's one of the things that was actually discussed in one of the sessions. I don't know if we, if we touched on that, but they do a lot of advertising for us. Um, so yeah, that's what comes with the platform. And one other thing, uh, and this is my last thing that I want to say, one key takeaway was that basically when they do the advertising for us, if you get people to so your list or whatever traffic you have from your website to your landing page, then um, Udemy will automatically do retargeting for you towards your, your course. So, you know, just focus on putting more high quality courses on there. Don't just rely on, on Udemy audience. You build your own audience. And then I guess we'll see different uh, models of, of pricing emerging and, and all of that in the short term future. Mm -hmm. Great. Guys, Thanks. I'm going to step off now. I'm going to let Jack connect or whoever wants to take my yeah, seat. I'm going to be in the audience, okay? It was great you, having guys. a chat with everyone. Thanks, Dragos. Good talking Thanks, to you again. Thanks, Dragos. We will like chat with you later on. Enjoy yeah. the rest yeah. of your day there, okay? Hey, so Teresa or Jack or someone, if you want to like just jump in and just spend a few moments talking about your experience or what stood like what um, uh, session that you attended, go ahead and jump in and we'll let you chat it up. This is your moment of fame. Okay, uh, I think I'm jumping out, uh, Danny. So Teresa and Jack can come in. What do you think? Teresa, you want to jump in for a moment? Off to lunch. Chad, have a great lunch. Here we go. We're going to accept. Teresa joining us live from to from Tokyo, hey. Washington. Hey yeah. there. How's it going? Yeah, you to be live. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm doing really good. I got this the sun's really bright. I'm gonna shut the window here. Oh, that's always nice to like have sunshine on the Washington coast. That's a bit better. Yeah, I wish I were at the Washington coast right now, like having a drink or something. <laughs> so, hey. It's beautiful here. <laughs> so, um, what's your takeaway? Like, what, what stood out the most for you? Um, I, I enjoyed the whole thing. It was totally amazing for me. Uh, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Guys, can you hear uh, okay? I yes. I, I only got to uh, attend one single workshop because I was a speaker at two of them. And so uh, it was uh, Phil's workshop on uh, taking your course to the next level with the video with uh, with um, uh, how to use your cameras and stuff like that. And he did an amazing job. I really enjoyed that. He, you know, he showed everyone about lighting and he talked about different things that have to do with choosing your camera and microphone. And he did a really wonderful job, so I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't get to see that one with um, Bill, so I hope they were recording it. And that's just because I know that he does a, a great job, and there was a marketing, uh, one of the um, marketing ones that I wanted to attend. It might have been the one with Mimi Goodwin, which was just uh, amazing to see someone uh, go, I mean, you talk about your story with your past too. You're very open with that. And Mimi was open with her dealing with abuse and that. And now she's making in the high um, six figures with her blog. And I just felt so inspired. And, and just like when you join Matt and I with your story and how you've taken your passion for 
sourdough bread and turned it into this business. Like I, I saw that you just posted, I think in the studio or the faculty lounge that you just uh, achieved 10,000 followers on YouTube, which is pretty yeah. amazing, <laughs> really, really cool. And I mean, I think you'll continue to see that um, increase. So congratulations on that. But uh, it, I mean, like I was telling everybody, it was so great to like, be able to meet you and others in person. And it's just a, a totally different experience because we're chatting like this now, but we spent the weekend face to face. So, yeah. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt. I'm jumping out, uh, leaving the, the, fine, the seat yeah. to Jack. Thank you very much, Dennis, for, for this conversation. Yes, Teresa, and we're going to chat Jeremy. soon. We're going to chat again because okay. I'm going to have you on to talk about something else later, okay? I like that. Okay. See you guys. Ooh. Have a great day. Oh, bye. Bye, Diego. <laughs> Jack, is it too loud like where you're at? Do you want to hop on for just a moment? I mean, we can wrap things up here pretty soon. I just wanted to get a few other people, so we'll have Jack uh, come on yeah. here and... I'm I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a refill real quick, so I'm gonna hop off in case anyone else wants to. But I'm gonna sit and listen, so I'll be right okay. Back. There you are, at the Starbucks. Is it super loud? No, it's not actually that loud. We can hear you. This but is this like it's it's always peak hours in this particular Starbucks that I like to work in. So if it is, I will happily jump off this call and listen to uh, Dennis and Teresa spread their wisdom because they've got so much more to offer than I do. Well, I think like Teresa, like, um, and maybe you too, I'm, I'm not necessarily burnt out. I'm still kind of recovering because I, I feel like I've come out of, of this high and I was telling, oh, yeah, and I told Jack that I said I was having, like last night I was kind of having withdrawals because I'm like going, I'm here by myself working again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? So I was, even, wait. I was even telling Leandra the other night, Dennis, that uh, that I miss you. Having your uh, having your positivity around is something spectacular. <laughs> your enthusiasm is off the charts. Thanks, buddy. Uh, I, Teresa, I was helping him last night with his his website, uh, trainerjack.com, uh, and you run a website too. Do you use WordPress for your website, Teresa? Uh, yeah. So we found out that he had like over 18,000 comments and we know like with WordPress that a lot of those are spam. And so I had him activate the a, a Kismet um, plugin so that it would go through and get rid of that spam because he was getting air messages. And so we finally got that taken care of. But um, yeah, it's just like, so what did you think about like Seth's speech and what do you think about like the stuff that was talked about on the um Price change. We'll go with uh, Teresa first, and then Jack. You can give your thoughts on that, okay? Uh, well, I was really happy to hear about Udemy's vision and why they were doing the price changes and where they mm -hmm. hope to take the company. Um, I was on board anyway with Udemy, but that really made me feel like I'm really happy that I stayed on board with Udemy because I really feel that. Uh, the future of Udemy is yet to even begin. I think that uh, looking at their growth, I think, uh, you know, another five years down the road, we're all going to be really amazed at where they've taken the company. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, I was really glad to uh, be on board with that. And I just, I, even when I was there, I was wishing that all the instructors could hear what they were saying, because I feel that that would really help morale with the uh, instructors. Yeah. Uh, I just wish wish everyone was there. It would have been great. Yeah, you know, and the thing was is there wasn't anyone that stood up and voiced frustration or anything like that. There might have been some side chats or something like that, but it was very positive, the attitude. And I'm so glad that you mentioned like five years down the road because I was saying earlier, just like the stock market, there's so many people who are in it just for the short term, but I'm in it for the, the long haul. And there's so much potential down the road when you talk about only 11,000 or 11,000, 11 million students at this point. There's so much more room for growth. And during that time, we're developing ourselves too, like you with your YouTube channel and, and Jack with his website. Um, what is your website? Is, is it Northwest Sourdough or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah northwestsourdough.com. Exactly. So, and if you're listening to this at some point, go out and visit those websites, trainerjack.com too. Um, you guys are building 
businesses. You're building your, your sourdough site and Jack is building a fitness site. And <laughs> I was going to make a bad joke, but I won't about like, uh, uh, I, when I was talking about bread, I was thinking like Oprah because of her commercial, like I love bread <laughs> and, and then just like, so like Jack would be the fitness part of that because Oprah um, also is, you know, like well known with um, dieting and fitness and all of that. So, but um, anyway, so both of you kind of like, um, you've got the food and he's got the, the, the fitness part, but you're developing followers on YouTube, your website, you're building an email list. And that's what instructors have to do. You can't go and just put a course on Udemy and expect that Udemy is just going to funnel people your way. They do marketing, but they're not marketing just your specific course because there's a ton of different courses on there. So it's our responsibility as uh, as instructors to build our own business, to build our followers. So then that way when something like Udemy has it swings or whatever, they're not going to uh, affect us as much as they would as someone who just has courses on Udemy and nothing else, you know? Yeah. Yep. So, so Jack, what about you? Like, what did you take away from, from some of the stuff at Udemy live? You know, it's really interesting. Um, and Dennis, I know that me and you talked about this. I think I didn't get as many projections and specifics for the future as I wanted from them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think all around it was great because the the very least that I wanted out of that conference was to just be able to get together with you guys and connect and get to know you and make some memories and talk and strategize and whatever. And I was like, if that's all this weekend is, then it's going to be great. And, you know, that having my expectation there, everything else I got on top of it, I was really happy with. Um, yeah. I'm really interesting. I'm really interested to see where sales keep going on Udemy because it sounds like reach is a lot more important to them mm -hmm. um, than, than other people as opposed to like growing the sales base first. I think they really want to grow the visibility as much as they can and reach as many people as possible. Um, and that may may affect their income and it may affect our income. And um, I, I can definitely empathize with that because uh, I'm on the same page. Like I think that uh, you know, my purpose and my passion is uh, helping people lose weight and get into the best shape of your lives because as somebody who is almost 50 pounds overweight, I know how dramatic of an impact that has on every area of your life, developing health and fitness as a lifestyle and a discipline. Um, and it's funny to say that I want to help as many people as I can, but at the same time, I think I got so much from Seth's speech as far as like, we need to be exclusive and paint the exact picture of people who are taking our courses and want to take our courses. That I, I know personally, I think 60% or 70% of my audience are males between the ages of 25 and 34 from my Google Analytics. So that's really who I'm going to try to serve is guys like me who are overweight, who are out of shape, who want to get in better shape and work on themselves. And I think that, you know, you can relate a lot of things. And I love that Seth did this. You can relate a lot of things in our online brands and our online business back to relationships in the real world. Mm -hmm. um, and Jeremy kind of brought this up earlier, and I'm glad he did. You know, as a trainer, I'm not just going to train anybody, especially now that I I don't need to just train anybody that comes up to me. Like, I want to train a very specific person that has the drive and determination to be willing to change and that I know they'll have the knack for keeping these habits up without me when I'm gone, like after I've taught them everything they need to know. And I think we need to be exclusive in particular about our students, about our customers, about anybody who's consuming our content and painting that picture for them because, you know, we're not just going to hang out with any person who's, you know, walking down the street or that we bump into a bar. We're going to hang out with the same people who are into the same things that we're into, who are passionate, who are motivated, who are hardworking, who are involved, who are intentional. And those are the kind of people that I think all of us, um, you know, instructors, especially the 159 or 160 that showed up at the conference this past weekend, I think we really need to focus on those people. I really like what Seth said about 
you know, kind of kind of scrapped the reviews because a lot of the, or, uh, you know, I guess scrapped the reviews in general, which I thought was really funny because if, if they are one and two stars, they probably aren't people who should have been in your course in the first place. Like I usually yeah. try to make it really evident, like, look, I'm going to give you a lot of habits in this course. And if you don't have the time on your hands for all of them, you should look at my other courses that only involve like implementing one or two things that will mm -hmm. um, save time in your day because you're not going to have the chance to even work out an hour a week, which is usually about all I ask from people. So, you know, I think what it comes back to the biggest point at the end of the day, and I heard a lot of instructors say after uh, Seth spoke on Sunday, is that you know, I'm really thankful to be a part of this ride with Udemy because they're they're innovators and they're pioneers in this online instruction and teaching platform. But at the same time, at the end of the day, to, to be able for all of us to do what we love to do. I mean, we have to make money to do what we love to do. And I, mean, I think we want to because it's what we're passionate about. Mm -hmm. So and Dennis, we've talked about this. We talked about this with a lot of the other you know guys and gals at the conference like the focal point should be getting to know people and building that relationship. And the best way that people can get to know yeah. us is sending them to our website, sending them to our blog, giving them a ton of great, you know, free information and paid information to be able to like pour into their lives. What we really believe, you know, can help them change it for the better, whether it's baking incredible sourdough bread, which Teresa, I'm probably going to have to PayPal you some money so you can send some my way, or at least, I, or at least I can do the recipes on my own. You know, like Dennis helping so many people with marketing and expanding their brand and reach. I mean, we spent two hours on uh, Facebook or Google Hangouts yeah. the other night, and Dennis was helping me like fix my website. And I basically just kept hearing, "Oh no, Jack, this is so bad." <laughs> <laughs> but I got to fix a lot of these things, and he loved helping out with that. And I was helping him out with marketing. So yeah. I think what it comes back to at the end of the day is it, it's all, it all comes back to we want to have a positive impact on these people's lives and teach what we're passionate exactly. about. But we have to keep in mind our own self-preservation at the end of the day that the way that we keep the relationship going is bringing these people to our sites and our email list and familiarizing them with our personality and uh, personalized assets, I guess, online, if that, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I think that you have some very valid points in there. So... Um, um, I, I think that uh, building your tribe is the single most important thing. Uh, I had somebody joke with me that, um, you know, that it was like having a eight year overnight um, success where you're an, uh, an overnight sensation, you know, but it takes you eight years to get there. So it's not really overnight. And that's really true. Uh, a lot of instructors put their courses up and they don't have a following. They don't have any social media. And then they're really disappointed because nothing happens. But, you know, I've been uh, working at what I do for almost 13 years. And, uh, and you know, you have to work at it. You have to lay the foundation. You can't just put it out there and expect it to take off by itself. So, um, so that's what I would say. Uh, your, your tribe is really the most important thing to, to, uh, to do and and if you do that, then you're going to have a lot of loyal people who really like what you do. And they are the ones that spread to everyone else, uh, you know, and they get them to come to you. So your your loyal tribe is the most important, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you on that. Um, it's just kind of strange. Like, I mean, for me, like going there and, you know, people knowing me from this blab, watching the blab and sat down next to Jewel, who's an instructor out of Vancouver, and she recognized my voice from blab, uh, from blab and realizing that those people are, what you say, part of my tribe, you know? It's just, it's crazy. Yeah, I think the, 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 the funnest part of the whole event was connecting with everybody. I and I'm. I feel like you, Dennis. I'm just. I'm still tired, and I'm still kind of um, in withdrawal. I had so much fun. It was so exciting. And the most important thing to me was just meeting everybody. And, and I didn't really get a chance to uh, meet everyone uh, because I, I was a speaker, and so I was kind of focused on on what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, it was amazing to see people. And I agree with uh, what Jeremy said, 
that for some people you only saw their face and all of a sudden you were looking up at them like, wow. <laughs> it, it was uh, interesting to actually see everyone in 3D. Yeah. It, it was amazing. Yeah, I, I was telling Jack that like I same thing that I didn't get to meet everyone. What I wanted to do is meet the people that I had already, that I already know like yourself. Yeah. And then maybe it find, you know, like along the way, a few new people. And that's what happened. I just like, you know, if I knew everybody or I met everybody, I wouldn't be able to retain all of that information on what, yes. what they do and where they, <laughs> they live. Because we were talking about earlier, like the, the name thing, like uh, Dragos, which I know how to say his first name, but his last name, every day, so they would have to sit there and think about it. But, um, you know, at least pronouncing the first name, but it, the same thing is like people, like I know that you live in Toklin, Washington. I know that you used to live, I'll still get it. Like, I think it was Cambridge. We, we, I said council, yep, didn't I? Exactly. So, so she lived here in the state of, of um, state of confusion. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> she, she she understands because I live here, and then nine months of winter and three months of summer and only a breath in between. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and she knows that like Seattle is my favorite city, and and Jack is in like right now he's in the L.A. area. He'll be back there in a a few months. Phil lives there. Dave lives there. So so you know that kind of stuff where people uh, live, and we talked about his mom and his dad and they, how they met in the LA area. He met his girlfriend while in the LA area. And so, you know, you know these, you get to know these little things about people and that's how you build these relationships with others. And, and for me, like by knowing that stuff, I can connect people, you know, with uh, different people. So, I was just like looking at some stuff here in the room here. I don't know like why people think that they can come on and and uh, just. Same in chat. Yeah, I didn't even see it because I was talking and it was just like. Yeah. Can you ban him? I did. Oh okay. Which one of us look? Uh, like? yeah. oh, I look like Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean's awesome. I love Roland Atkinson, I think is his name. So yeah. Uh, I also agree with something that uh, Diego said, and that was that the Udemy instructors made everyone feel like a celebrity. They were just, they would go up to you and just, oh my gosh, Teresa, I'm so happy to mm -hmm. meet you. And, uh, you know, you just felt so welcomed and you felt so good. And they, they to me, they spared no expense to make us um, comfortable, happy, and have a wonderful weekend. I was very impressed. Yeah, I was like telling my mom uh, that, you know, I, I really enjoy like being able to get ready and you come down and there's breakfast, you pick out your stuff, the coffee, somebody comes, somebody <laughs> came and took away our dishes, had our sessions, walked into this room, lunch was laid out for us, had lunch, a wonderful conversation, and then take it away. Same thing, the reception wine brought over to you hors d'oeuvres and not the same service at the holiday Inn, yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> well and, and they then, have a waffle breakfast i think at the holiday Inn. that's not too bad <laughs> uh, and and then you come home dennis and nobody does anything for you so well, I, live with, <laughs> I, I, I could easily get spoiled that way for sure yeah i live with my folks so i i can't really talk so yeah like i do my wash and stuff like that but dinner is usually prepared by my mom so i make my i make my breakfast and my lunch so so yeah they seriously did such a great job like that's why as soon as we walked into headquarters dennis like i really just wanted to go up to as many people mm -hmm. on the udemy team as i could and like shake their hand give them a hug like get to know them a little bit because i can't imagine the additional work that they had to put into organizing that event on top of everything else that they've been working yeah. on too i mean they've got 200 people who are working you know for two or three other people per person and you know it's it's wild what they were able to mm -hmm. put together yeah dave dave says that udemy team was amazing and i totally agree with that i got to afterwards on mm -hmm. saturday night we went over to um the bar uh, house of shields 
and went into this upper room, beautiful woodwork and all of that. And I had a conversation, you know, for quite a while with Lindsay. And, and it wasn't just you to me. It was talking about her travels because I know that she loves traveling and, you know, the, where she lives at in San Francisco and how long she's been there. And I know already that she's from Portland and, and I love Portland just as much as I love Seattle. And so, you know, you build that uh, relationship and all of that. Who are you blowing a kiss to there? <laughs> yeah, just sitting right across from me at Starbucks. Yeah, they're like sitting there like, why is that guy like talking to his laptop? I mean, I think it's so, <laughs> it's so cool. Here I am in my room and I've got a desk and Teresa, um, she, like, where are you at? Like, are you in your kitchen or? Uh, no, I still live in a shop garage and I'm still working on getting into a real home. So that's why it looks kind of weird. No, you told me about awesome. that, like with the concrete floors and all of that. And I think that that's pretty cool. It's just a, a whole different situation. And Jack is in a Starbucks, you know, and, and it's so um, awesome. Like those, how we communicate these days. And Dave said that he went surfing on his trip home. So uh, let's see. I just pulled open that picture so I can take a look at that. I love that Dave went surfing on the way back. Yeah, good for you, Dave. I'm waiting for that. He's such a California boy. I love it. To load. Hmm. I don't know why. Did you get that to load? Uh, it's in the process right now. It looks like it's a link to Facebook. Yeah. So real quick, I mean, the only thing that I like, I wish I would have spent a little more time down there. Um, I didn't get to make it to the Golden Gate Bridge, but I did see it while I was coming in. And I saw it like years ago when I was younger. I mean, the weird thing is, is I don't mind telling my age. So I'm 48. I was born in California. We left for Idaho when I was nine. So it's been 40 years probably since I have been to San Francisco. And I remember as a kid, I remember seeing Bart and how I was fascinated by that because where we lived at in California didn't have like transportation like that yet. And that would have been when Bart actually first started. Um, airport was really cool. It was Pride Week in San Francisco. I mean, that's like the largest Pride Festival in the U.S. and the airport was lit up in pride colors and there were pride flags and all of that. And it's nice to see a city that celebrates diversity. We got, And same thing, that's what I was telling Dennis Shang. I was so impressed with the diversity um, at Udemy. So many different people and from, you know, different walks of life and all of that. And then just... Um, you know, like being able to explore, like being in the city again, because I used to live in Seattle and the city life is such more, more dramatic and, and weird and chaotic sometimes, you know, the traffic and just people run across the street at random points and um, just all different types of people, people, you know, of course, like all cities have their problems with um, the homeless population. And, and then we also went, the first uh, day we went and had an amazing breakfast at uh, Honey Honey uh, crepery, I think it was called, and that we waited outside for like at least half an hour to get in there, and we didn't care. We were having a conversation, uh, you know. I was taking photos, and we got in there, and I had the cable car omelet, which was delicious. It had salmon, capers, cream cheese, and onions in it. Jack, what did you have? I for oh the um, the the, um, the the I love how this is digressed into what we had for breakfast. Chorizos. <laughs> Chorizos. Well, that was so good. It was like a good time. But uh, I had chorizo but, and eggs and some really good potatoes. Yeah. Those potatoes. I was telling my mom like how wonderful the potatoes were. So I um, definitely had a good time doing that. And then we went back and we just um, chilled out for a while. And then we met at an Irish pub. There's oh, Dave yeah. on the skateboard right there. Oh, and then goodness. we went over to Udemy and did the. Um, and out to that bar on Friday night again. So it's cool that way. Dennis, I need to get going here, so I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna let's wrap down. it up. Let's, let, let's go ahead and wrap it up. So everybody, remember that tomorrow afternoon, I think it's 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, that you can join Dave and Phil for the Passive Income Show. They're going to be talking to Udemy instructors and talking about their experiences. Teresa is uh, NorthwestSourdough.com and jack is at trainerjack.com 
and I'm at DennisJSmith.com. So, hey, thanks, everybody, for joining us for this recap of Udemy Live. And feel free to share it out there with others so they can see what we talked about in our experience. And uh, we'll do more of these blabs again soon. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Diego and Dragos and Jeremy. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Yes, Bye. thanks, Dave, for joining us. I appreciate it. Bye. Have a drink for me at Starbucks, Jeff.